<laughs> so welcome. So welcome. It's our first in our series in, in, in um, 2021. Obviously, 2020 didn't end up. If I talked last year at this time, we never would have imagined what 2020 was going to be. Um, we know some things happened in 2020, and so obviously we had less social contact, we had more time, we had less things we could do, but despite time, we became almost at a measure of, 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 of health went the wrong way. And so there's something more than time that causes us not to engage in taking care of ourselves. So this is our start of our series. We're going to talk about, Dr. Leslie's going to lead off with the detoxing and some of the principles. Dr. Aaron's going to talk about the liver and how that functions in detoxing. Dr. Matt's going to talk about movement. And I'm just going to try to close up and talk about why we don't engage in some of the research out there, some fascinating research. research. And basically what I want you to do when you're healing, I mean, you know, Dr. Lexi just will lead off with such a great excitement, Dr. Aaron, Dr. Matt. But write down something that triggers you because if you're not mindful of where we want to get in life, we're not going to get anywhere. And so it doesn't matter if it's mindful eating, mindful moving, mindful of what I think and what I remember, that we're really going to talk about how do we become mindful during this process and that. And so listen with intent of something I'm going to take away that I'm going to do better. We, we did a talk earlier to an industry. We went around the room and asked people, and everybody took something different, but in them talking about it, they engaged in what they want to change with their behavior. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we all know the difference between a french fries and a banana. But we'll choose the french fries. And we need to think about why we do that. So again, Dr. Lexi now, we should get, should get us started. All right, guys, so our main topic today is going to be on detoxification. So one of the big things is we have to learn on why do we need to detox. So why detox? So if these stats don't make you want to detox, um, 3,000 new chemicals a year, and there's over 200,000 chemicals in the industry, and 60% is actually absorbed into our skin, whatever we put on it. Um, other things is there's 84,000 just in industrial use that can be used in your house. And then there's 232 toxic chemicals found in the U.S. newborn's umbilical cord. So if those don't make you want to detox, we're going to go through where your toxins are coming from. So it's easy to be like, oh, we should all do detoxes. We should do this, this, and this, right? But if you don't know what to look for, then how do you know you should do it? So your food, Wisconsin, we love our, our cows, happy cows, more than California. Just kidding, I won't say that. But our cows, so one of the big things that is a source of toxins is sometimes our food that we eat, so our meats. Um, one of the big things is that 80% of our antibiotic use is actually from our produce, or our cows. Um, that's what it's used on. And if you've ever heard of building up a bacterial resistance or how we're getting concerned like overuse of diagnosing with antibiotics in our clinics, well, then what happens when we're consuming this every single day? We're building up some resistances. So that's one big thing is our sources of meat. So I always try to go grass-fed or organic and kind of go for those lean meats too. The other thing is our produce. So this is our produce right here. And if you haven't heard, there's tons of lawsuits um, going against different organizations because of the pesticides that we've been eating and the things like carcinogens we've been seeing, endocrine disruptors, um, and just really getting more toxins in our life. So one of the big things um, I like to do is use vinegar and put it over the fruit and let it sit in there for about 10 minutes to get some of the chemicals off. And sometimes you'll actually have where a foggy bit comes off and you're like, holy moly, that was on my veggie. If you're buddy into apple and you know that waxy feeling, you know, you're kind of like, ooh, like what was that taste? That's chemical coming off on your fruit. So we have to be really conscious about what we're putting into our bodies, especially fruit or food, because it's going right in there. One of the ways that can help you with that is the Dirty Dozen. So each year the Environmental Working Group comes out, and you can easily find this online at ewg.com or .org. And it gives you the top 12 veggies that absorb the most pesticides. So these ones would be absolutely amazing for actually getting organic. So if you were to prioritize buying organic, this would be it. Um, that includes strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, potatoes, strawberries, and that spinach are probably their top one right there. So, and that's their fourth year of being on this. So when you're kind of making the decision between a couple dollars and trying to detoxify a little bit, this is where you're going to help out big time. Clean 15 is the opposite, so these ones are not as important to get organic, but if you can do it, I would definitely get these organic still too. With the Clean 15, a lot of them have 
where it's got a little bit of a shell on it, and that helps so it's not absorbing so much of the pesticide. So that's super, super important. Next, we're coming here, and some of these letters and abbreviations and stuff, I'm like, holy shnikes, what is all of this? Um, if you look on the back of the boxes, that's one of the biggest things that you actually can do is like, what am I putting into my body? Um, the first one is artificial color. Uh, if you didn't know this, a lot of countries actually have made like red dye number 550 million, whatever. It's been illegal in other countries. So, and then we, and since it looks so cool and it sells a lot of food and oh, this cute red thing, artificial color is actually super bad for you. So we have patients really try to avoid that and that might be a good source of toxicity in your life. Artificial sweeteners, those cute little packets. As a kid, I actually used to drain those down. Um, you know, just pour a packet of sugar in your tummy and that would be great. Or you would pour a pack of sugar into the creamer and you'd mix it as long as you can trying to make butter. That did not work for me. But those two are something that we have to keep in mind. Aspartame is another one. A lot of people have heard about that, but that actually has a huge effect on our brain, along with nitrates, which is found in a lot of your meats. Um, any of your deli meats is where you'll be getting a lot of the nitrates, and those have a bad effect. And then the MSG. MSG is probably one of our biggest um, monosodium glutamate is one of our biggest offenders, but with MSG that actually activates your brain, so your cells start going, it gives a little inflammation there. So our athletes who get a lot of whacked in the head, sometimes it's that MSG that can do it, and that's found in a lot of, um, well, some of like the sauces we use, and you know what, they have about 50 different names for that. So if you wanna look up, literally look up monosodium glutamate, and then look up the different names of it, because they literally call it natural flavors in some of our sauces. So that's kind of scary because imagine your athlete is eating a bunch, goes out for a Chinese buffet, low quality one because there is some good places, eats all that, goes and plays on the ice, gets whacked, gets a concussion 10 times easier than they should. Um, BHA and BHT, those ones I had not heard as much about, but those ones are actually found, um, they're considered to cause cancer, and they're found in fatty processed chips, sugary cereals, and a lot of petroleum products is where they're from. So if we start looking and we start seeing some of these words and you're like, oh, it's a big word, like whatever it is, what it is, kind of try to think like, what can that be doing in my body? Things like trans fats and hydrogenated fraction oils can actually stay in your body for up to 20 years. That's a long time. And if there's only one gram in it and you eat one gram, that one bag of chips every single day of your life, how many trans, trans fats do we have in our body? So we start seeing delirious effects from that. Okay. Your kitchen. I am a person who is really bad at cooking. So I used to host um, with Megan from Downtown Grocery. Love, love, loved it. But she would lead the cooking aspect of it because here was me like, what am I doing with this? But what you cook with does matter. So a lot of times they talk, there was a big craze on the pans and cookware, the anti-stick on there. One of the things with that is that there, are, I think it's P PVAs or whatever, that come off of it and actually cause cancer causing agents. Infertility in some women, I have the research study coming up. But those things matter, so just to not have your eggs stick on there, I just lost what my eggs were doing, right? So that's a big deal. The other thing is bleaching cleaners. Um, my grandma owned a bar. She cleaned with bleach every single day. And you have to wonder what that does to your skin and your hands and everything right there, because that's a harsh chemical. And if we're getting 60% of our skin to absorb that in, Whew. I use Biofreeze on a lot of patients and my hands sometimes turn blue even after I wash them. And I go, okay, when you start getting that, I'm like, okay, I gotta stop using that so much. My husband yells at me. But plastic storage containers, so BPAs, um, anything that you're storing in the fridge. Um, let's say that I cook this amazing soup, which it wouldn't be me, it'd probably be my husband actually doing that. And I put it into the fridge and it was still hot, or even if it's been cold, it can leach those chemicals from those containers. So if you're kind of wondering like, oh, why should I detox or anything? This is probably, you know, you probably use at least one of these things on the daily. Um, styrofoam, and then also too, I put water question mark, because sometimes we can question what's in our water, um, what is our water quality but I don't want my pan to be sticky. Oh, it's PFOAs, and I cannot say that word. 
So all these big words kind of make it confusing sometimes. But we have this wonderful thing. If I say, OK, Google in this room, all of a sudden, every app is turning on. And you literally can look up the chemicals. That ewg.org also has where you can look up all those chemicals and be like, OK, should I be actually consuming this? Or why is it hard for me to say? Because anything that's hard for me to say, which actually is quite a lot, so I might starve, actually. But <laughs> anything hard to say, sometimes we have to think, what is it I'm putting in my body? And this is just um, solidifying that infertility and weight gain with those sticky pans, non-stick pans. You smell so good. So a lot of things that we use on our body every day absorb into our skin and then also to what we're spraying. So if you look, a lot of your perfumes have parabens. They might have different things that have huge letters in them. Um, those can really affect our endocrine system. And we're seeing more and more women who are infertile. And you have to think about what is the effect of everything that we're putting on our body is to smell good. And there's so many organic ways to do that. So we definitely will go through that. But even the makeup, um, one of my kids in my class actually told me about a lady who put on so much lipstick, she put it on 60 times a day lipstick, right? And so use tons and tons of lipstick. And she actually had, she had a seizure from it because she was putting on so much chemicals. So we're meant to, we're meant to be under stress and we're meant to have, you know, adaptation. So like you throw, okay, I ate an unhealthy meal. I should be able to digest it. I will live. I'll be fine. But when we overload our system is when we start having negative effects that we can't really recover from. Indoor air quality. So I use this picture. This is a baby girl's room right here. And it was absolutely, hi guys, come on in. Um, this, this is a baby's room. She's got beautiful, brand new, brand new furniture here, right? Probably brand new crib, brand new blankets, walls are freshly painted, brand new carpet. But what comes with all that brand new stuff? Chemicals. So we get this baby, we find out it's got 200 chemicals in the umbilical cord, and now we just put the baby in a room that's brand new. Chemicals everywhere, right? And although it's awesome, there's ways that you can actually decrease that chemical load in a room that you're putting your child in. So a lot of times, um, you kind of look at things like, OK, where is that chemical coming from in our house? The other thing is, hello, Marathon County. Have you guys heard of like that you, we're like the top for radon? Like we're one of the top counties here? Yeah. So um, radon is like a, a secret chemical, or like um, it comes from granite. And one of the things is that it literally will be in your basement. We have no idea and it actually causes lung cancer. So getting things like that tested, pretty obvious are like carbon monoxide. A lot of people have testers there. But then the not so obvious would be those paint and carpeting and flame retardants. Baby's clothes are actually sprayed with flame retardants when you get them. So make sure you're washing your baby's clothes. I don't know why they think that babies are going to just blow up in flames, but sometimes it just happens, I guess. Outdoor air quality. So um, this is another one. There's tons of research coming out on Roundup. If you guys didn't hear about the billions and billions of lawsuits coming through, um, it's kind of a big deal, and it's having a lot of effect on, on the people around us. So Roundup, pesticide killers, some of the miracle Grow, and then things like factories and car fumes. So when you get into your car and there's that beautiful, nice smell of it's a brand new car, you're actually sniffing in a lot of chemicals there. Um, which, uh, literally, I was so proud when my car still smelled new. I was like, oh, yeah, keep that in there. Like, don't even open the windows. We probably need to open the windows right there. So this is just saying um, there was a study done by, I think it was University of Washington, and gly glypho glyphosate, glyphosate, got it, um, it actually showed that glyphosate um, increased the risk of cancer by more than 40%. Now, that's a, that's a big deal. So remember that adaptation, our bodies cannot adapt. That's something to do with why we get cancer sometimes. We can't adapt. We start forming cells that aren't the right cells over the top. Ideas to promote detox. So enough of the negativity. We're going to get these docs up. But first, um, I'm just going to give you a few tips that I like to use in my life as much as I can. Um, when I did my first detox at Bouch, I was like really tired for like three days. But I had a pretty, I mean, if you haven't heard of my ketchup and a little bit of uh, sandwiches just of ketchup, or my cereal binges every single night, or anything like that. I mean, I was not the epitome of health when um, I first started like college and going to chiropractic school and stuff. So right here, um, when I first did that detox, I, it kind of was like, whoa, here we go. But Dr. Erin will kind of go through why that happened to my body. But also, too, um, things that you can do is eat the organic and avoid the dirty dozen. Buy those organic. 
Um, clean your veggies if you're not going to do organic. Well, you should clean your veggies anyways because I think I've seen like 50 people poke their finger into avocado or like an apple every time you go to the store. Um, so clean your veggies with vinegar or whatever sprays you like to use. Make your own cleaning products or use trusting brands. Um, a lot of times, like, I'll use things like Myers or essential oils and actually make my own. And, like, things like club soda or lemon actually do great um, if you take vinegar and dishwashing soap and spray it on your, on your um, tiling in your bathroom. That works like a miracle. And you're, you're not breathing in bleach or anything. Um, avoid Roundup or outdoor chemicals. Um, that one I, I do like to kill plants in my yard with. So I tried using also vinegar. Vinegar is like an amazing thing and it did work. Uh, sometimes you might have to cut it out though because that stuff gets pretty crazy. Um, get clean body products. If you go to ewg.org you can actually look up your makeup and body washes or anything that you use and it will put it on an index and it will say like whether it's endocrine disruptor, if there's cancer causing agents in it, like what is dangerous about this product and why it's dangerous. Um, check your food, avoid the sneaky additives. If you love things like dressing or different things like that, um, it's, it's one of those things that they sneak things in there. It's not like we're like, oh, you know, so if, like a Twinkie, we know a Twinkie is not healthy for us, right? And it survives, so if you see something, it can survive for months and months and months and months and years, and like Twinkies I think can literally live for 200 years. That tells you that something, I mean, all the apocalyptic movies, I mean, the, the, the walking zombies, they're eating Twinkies. But, um, <laughs> but really, though, if, if, it, if it survives that long and it's just like in a little package like that, you got to think twice about what's in it. Um, load up on healthy foods. Anything like eating good fruits and veggies is going to help antioxidants um, in your system and really help that system detox. Um, and then supplement slash detox and listen to the other docs. Just literally to put on there. So Dr. Aaron's going to hit you with his wisdom. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please reach out. Yeah. What? Is that already started? Is that one?